Yeah, but it's it, it's nice to see many, many different sides of the industry. It's nice to see different. Hey everybody and welcome to Geeks Vana Live. Thank you so much for everyone coming along and joining us this evening um, and this afternoon, depending on your time zone. Um, really looking forward to an exciting show this evening. We, we as, as you know, we try to bring you some slightly different shows um, as, as, as we go along with our live shows. We attempt to make them really something a little bit more, more interesting. Um, I have... In 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 my uh, two years now of of actually running this channel, um, I've 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 been enjoying myself an awful lot, meeting some diverse people from you know NASA scientists to um, freedom fighters, frankly, um, to some wonderful people who have even become my co-hosts, etc. And it, it's it's been a really interesting, um, fantastic. Um, uh, 
uh, exciting journey so far. And what we're going to try and do in the next few weeks is actually bring you some very different types of live streams as well and um, show you some of the, the awesome things that are happening out there with drones. Tonight, we're going to be talking to uh, the team uh, in California from Brink Drones uh, and talking about their Brink Lima drone, which is um, essentially a tactical drone, uh, which I'm, I'm very, very excited about talking to them about indeed. Um, so if you have any questions whilst we're, whilst we're talking to the team, please do at Keeksvana in the chat. Um, and we will, of course, um, uh, try our best to get any questions put over to them. Bear with us with the tech tonight. You know, there's the there's the old adages of never work with children and animals in 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 on on TV and in and in live shows, and I I, I could almost perhaps add live drones to that as well, of course. So um, there's there's an awful lot of preparation which has been, which has been going on into this. But anybody that knows that that flies FPV or frankly any kind of camera drone knows that sometimes when you press that button things don't quite happen sometimes. So do bear with us. We are um, we are ready to rock and roll with the with the tech side of things, which I'm very very excited about um and uh, yeah so without further ado i'm going to bring in my co-host and our guest this evening uh, who is angad singh from um uh, brink drones and in fact i can see them already starting to play with the drone on the floor there which is very exciting hi guys how are you i'm fine they can't hear us <laughs> oh they, i think they might be uh <laughs> angad he's still <laughs> muted uh, yeah we can hear you perfectly thank you hi how are you Absolutely. sir Thank you, Sean. Hey, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for having us on your show today. And I know that you and your co-hosts, you do this every Thursday, and that's fantastic. And, you know, we're coming into you live from Las Vegas, Nevada, here in the United States. So we appreciate you having us on from across the pond. And if that's an outdated saying, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm our Director of Business Development here at Brink Drones. And I'm going to be joined today by Kevin Stevens, who's our Director of Training, um, to show you the lemur and to answer whatever questions you have. And of course, this is live. So any few pause or they happen, right? Like, real life is real life. So I exactly. Things like this live. Yeah, exactly. All, all, all bets are off with live TV. I always say personally, but uh, and 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 certainly my audience are um, very, very used to a few technical glitches. So I'm sure whatever happens this evening will be far more fluid than than some of my shows in the past. So <laughs> there's no problems there, certainly. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 great to meet you both. Hi, 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 Kevin. Thank you for joining us as well. Really appreciate you Hello, uh, coming thank along. Thank you for having me uh, join. Excited for today. Yeah, indeed. Um, and, and Kevin, you're the director of training for Brink, aren't you? I, uh, I, uh, my, my job here at Bring Drones is to uh, bring in the various uh, clients when they buy the lemur, and specifically uh, SWAT teams or police departments that come in and buy the actual aircraft. Uh, my job is uh, what I've created here is a three-day training that includes uh, getting understanding everything you get inside your kit, understanding all the components of the aircraft and all the charging batteries, uh, the transmitter, all the things that come with it. And then goes into uh, basically a simulated flight where we take the students through a, a basic simulator, teaching wow. them the uh, controls of the uh, transmitter, uh, basically the throttle, the yaw, the lift, and basically the pitch and the rolls. And then we'll put you on a micro train, a small trainer that's also hooked up to our transmitters. It gives the students a little more understanding of how the actual dynamics of this aircraft are, which is a little different than most drones because most drones have a, a GPS uh, crutch, if you will, this particular aircraft here is, is, fly, is flown in a manual flight. And I'll demonstrate a little bit of what we do with our students and a little bit later in the broadcast. But what's, what's unique about this one here is that because you don't have that GPS situation, we can get right up to things. And you'll see as I fly through some doors and some windows, and especially under and around, up in an attic, you'll see just how, how maneuverable the aircraft is. And that helps uh, police departments and SWAT teams when they're clearing certain areas of a residence to look for people. I have a little simulated dummy uh, upstairs that we're going to locate. I'll show you not only in the broad daylight, but in uh, zero light conditions, we can see it with the IR capability and the floodlight capability. That, that's super. And then take it to the second day where the students fly this exclusively all day. We have a set training program that they learn the controls. We start with our throttle control first. We then go into our yaw controls, and then we start combining that with the pitch and the roll. And we have several drills that help the students really feel comfortable. And then we put on the goggles. The actual uh, FPV video goggles will help the students be right in the driver's seat. And then the final day, they do a, 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 some testing procedures and they get their, their, their new kits with them. 
Fantastic. I mean, that, 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 that's, a, that's a really comprehensive program, uh, which, of course, it, it needs to be because this, of course, is, is a, a specialist piece of equipment. This isn't, this isn't, your, your, this isn't your average drone, certainly. And, 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 and that goes all the way down to the very um, fabric of the drone as well, doesn't it? We, we are talking about a specialist, um, um, a, a, a unique piece of equipment, which every part of it is built to be as strong as possible and um, specifically for this tactical um, uh, use basically yeah absolutely sean that's that's a definitely correct right yeah so, oh, one, one of the things that is unique and uh one of the things our students get really blown away when they come to our training is just how hard this thing can hit the ground yes I personally witnessed this thing on full power into the walls and the only thing we really have to fix on this will be a prop guard and some broken props. Wow. Uh, I've seen this thing pile drive full speed into the concrete floor, into a concrete wall, and really the ruggedness of it, the carbon fiber, and it's really lightweight. We teach you how to crash professionally in our drone school, which means get off the throttle, kill the power, and let it fall down with gravity instead of throwing the throttle and driving it into the ground. The driving force versus the gravity force, is it, it really pay, pays dividends on the actual aircraft itself. And I'll go over here in a minute. What are some of the unique features about this this aircraft that helps uh, not only minimize damage, but to help keep it actually uh, safe? Yeah, absolutely. I'm really, really yeah. interested in the crash side and having an accident on there. Actually, that's something yeah, I'm really it, interested it, it in. It is. It is superb because it, again, obviously, this isn't the kind of drone that that you can fly fearing a crash. Obviously, when I'm flying my any of my drones, I'm I'm, I'm not necessarily fearing a crash, but I certainly don't want to have one. But in in this tactical use, of course, you you, you have to accept that there's going to be bumps and scratches. And and I, I think mm. it's fantastic just how strong it is. It's a it's a carbon fiber. 3D printed frame, isn't it, as well, to give it that extra strength? Yeah, sure. You want me to talk about the frame for a bit, Sean? Uh, yes, please do. So, Sean, right? Like, I mean, I've been in the drone industry for a while. A lot of the guys that we have here in the office, they come from an FPV racing background. Those are the gentlemen that are and, and ladies that are actually building these things, right? Because they have those skills and Excellent. they understand how to build drones inherently. And we combine those with then, like, you know, real aircraft mechanics and people that have backgrounds. In, in manufacturing and heavy manufacturing. So we have a really cool team here in Las Vegas that's actually putting this together. And it is pretty much 100% domestically manufactured here in this facility. So we're in our training room. Uh, Kevin has a couple rooms in the office that are for training specifically. And then on the other side of the warehouse is, you know, a full manufacturing facility with, you know, a, a high number of 3D printers and about 20 technicians' desks and, you know, CNC cutters and laser machines, et cetera. And, so what this is actually comprised of is it's made of a chopped carbon fiber and nylon blend. And the reason we do that is carbon fiber is incredibly strong, right? But carbon fiber is also pretty brittle. Like I'm a big mountain biker. I ride carbon fiber bikes. And I know that if I get a rock that's going to slam into my bike frame, I'm going to experience what's called a carbon failure. So they don't say that carbon fiber breaks. They say it fails. Yes. The reason for that is when something does chip or break, it just it's gone. You can't use it anymore. And so what we do is we use a little bit more advanced material composite, which is a carbon fiber that's chopped together. So there's no strands. Okay. So this thing is like really tough, right? When, when Kevin's going to fly this, he's going to show you that we can bang into walls. When I do demos for this, I will just kick it, like literally kick it because it's exactly that mindset that people are like, they're so scared of having their drone touch things because they're afraid that it's going to fall over that they really... They, they don't realize that this is built for tactical applications, right? Yes. I mean, we can talk about the company's story, which we should tell you because it's amazing. And we should also talk about why this is so tough. It's tough because we want this to go into tight structures, into very unique and tough environments, and be able to accurately and, and clearly depict what's happening inside of an environment, in a house or a building that could be burning or there could be a suspect inside, and communicate that to the first responders outside. Excellent. We think that this is a tool that's been purpose-built, niche-built to clear houses and go into tight, confined spaces to live stream that video out so that we can make the safest decisions. You know, we, we want to avoid firefights. We want to avoid um, any sort of violent outcome. We want to have a tool that comes from 100% perspective of being a de-escalation tool. So this has a phone inside of it. So these are their microphones on the front of the system. And then there's a loudspeaker on the base so that you can establish two-way communication. Excellent. We put a SIM card in it and you just call it like a cell phone. <laughs> and now you can talk to people. And if you can have a conversation, you're most likely to have the most peace, peaceful outcome. So we believe that what we're doing here is creating 
genuinely a tool for the future that's going to innovate upon things that are already happening in the real world and make the real world and make public safety operations safer, not just for the officers involved, but also for the suspects and the innocent bystanders. And we know that in the last year, there's been a strong calling from citizens in the United States and around the world to establish safer means of policing. And we believe that technology like this is a tangible effort on the way to a goal like that, right? Um, and we Absolutely. have tremendous respect for those that put their lines, you know, put their lives on the on the line as first responders and public safety professionals all over the world. And we believe that if we can give them a niche tool that's specifically designed for them, that they can do their jobs even safer. And if they're more de-stressed, then the entire situation is more de-stressed. Absolutely. So what do you think about that, Sean? That, that's absolutely fantastic. And, and one of the things that, that I, I, I really like about it as well is the the fact that obviously once you get this drone into a position where you want it to talk to a suspect, so it, it, it will obviously come to a land, um, but then it, it actually has a 10-hour battery life where it, it, once it's perched, uh, it, it can yes. sit there for if 10 it's not hours. Flying. 10 hours yeah. is incredible, isn't it, really? I mean, that, yeah. that's just a, well, a phenomenal amount of time to be able to communicate and, and, and keep that open. The reason for that, Sean, is because we use a lithium ion chemistry for our battery. So you can think of our battery as very similar to a Tesla battery. Okay. In fact, the chemistry of the cells is incredibly similar. Um, and the reason for that is our CEO, before he started Brink Drones, oh, by the way, Blake Resnick, our CEO, he's 21 years old. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's one of these, these, you know, child tech geniuses. Super. And it's actually okay to stay that live on TV because <laughs> he's such a humble guy. And he's such a nice person that I'm not worried about it, you know. Like, awesome. Just That's so cool. Life. Yeah, he's an amazing, he really is. And he's he's unique. You know, when he was 14, he went to Northwestern Engineering College, youngest ever to be accepted there. Then he worked at uh, DGI. He worked at Tesla. And he actually worked at 15 years old. He worked at McLaren in the United Kingdom, uh, working on the suspension system for the 720S supercar. Wow. So he likes cars. He likes drones. He likes things that fly. And so when, when I was asked to come join this company, I was like, yeah, absolutely. This is super cool. Let's let's create a company that's domestically manufacturing systems to make the world a better place. And so we have a lot of faith in that. And the battery, right, like I said, is that lithium ion chemistry. It actually lasts 500 charge cycles. So, for example, a lot of the listeners out here that are wow. used to DGI or Autel or the lithium polymer batteries, where you charge it 70, 80 times and that battery then bloats and that's has to right. you know, yeah. be recycled in a safe manner. Ours last 500 charge cycles. That's incredible. Yeah. That that really is superb. I mean, it, it is it is it is such a unique thing, and and it's it, this is this is really the reason why um, I, I I reached out to you, and 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 uh, again, th thank you guys for coming on and uh, uh, showing us the drone this evening. But it's 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 it is such a unique concept, and we. we as as a hobby and as a profession uh, um, um, involving drones, we we get a lot of mixed media out there. So we we're often talked about in negative terms, as far as you know, flying near airports and on all the sort of the potential terror aspects of our drones and that type of thing. So when I find uh, stories like Brink Drones and really you know the, the the core thread of this product is is to improve things and to to help you know make tactical situations even safer, I'm I'm just blown away. Frankly, it's it's a superb concept. So is, is this the bundle that, that you get with, okay, the, uh, with the drone? Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through, Sean, I'm going to take you through uh, what our kit entails, uh, what, what you get when you come and train here. So I'm got to you can come over here a little bit closer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you, when the, the kit you get in a very rugged Pelican case, because it's designed to be in and out of vehicles, uh, vehicles like SWAT Bearcats or training vehicles, once this uh, case opens, everything is designed to be ready accessible. You have your the Lemur aircraft uh, on the left, you have your transmitter in its own case on the right. Nice. Also, you have the FPV video goggles ready to go. You have two, you get actually three goggle batteries, one that's on the actual goggle itself ready to go, two extra spares. All these uh, cables here work with our charger, which will charge not only both lemur batteries or both goggle batteries and the transmitter itself. You'll also get a battery checker to check the voltage of your battery. You'll also get two uh, lemur batteries. Inside these cases here is extra tools to work on uh, the various little options that we train them to, to, to work with. And you get spares of all the little pieces. On the actual drone itself, you'll get extra props. You get two extra sets of props. You'll get some uh, repair kits to fix the, uh, the broken uh, prop guards. You'll get a couple extra screws. 
an extra video antenna and a couple extra standoffs. And I'll explain why that's important here in a minute. So we give you enough. And we also, when you come to training, we'll have a, a situation where we teach you how to um, fix this. If it crashes externally, nothing is done inside that comes back to us. But what's unique is that an operator on the field, if they break a standoff or come driving it down the ground, they break one of their prop guards. It's a little bit of super glue and accelerator and the thing locks right up and they're good to go. Super. They can twist this enough to where the, the props work perfectly. We'll give you two sets. We give you the tools to take off the eight millimeter hex wrench to take off the props and all the other stuff is pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, one thing that's really unique about this aircraft that I think is uh, needs to be mentioned is our accessory kit. With the accessories that you come through, there's a couple accessories here that, that works really, really well. The first one is our external floodlight. And in conjunction with IR, this plugs into the bottom, which I'll demonstrate in a little bit. And these four lights are extremely bright. And you'll see as we as we actually do that cover for you and show you what the floodlight is. Excellent. So the idea is to find someone in IR light and then light them up with the white light. The second accessory is actually a payload dropper that we can hook in the same fashion. This servo brings this link rod in and out, and we can drop things up to a suspect, up to a pound. So we can take a water wow. bottle, a cell phone, whatever it is, we can fly it around, and I'll show you kind of how it works in a little bit. Uh, the next accessory is what we call our robot pad. And what this basically is, is you can pull off this double stick tape, slap it on an external robot, and the lemur with the um, actual payload dropper that's on, it hooks on the front here, and it can ride itself right into a, a scenario and take off. So if you can't fly it in the position that it's in, you can put it on this external piece, put it on a police robot, drive it into the residence, and then it will <laughs> detach itself from this actual robot piece. That's incredible. And finally, is our glass breaker. This thing right here is a tungsten tip. It spins at about 30,000 RPMs. It hooks up underneath the lemur. And when you turn on, it spins. All you got to go up and do is touch the glass. Glass is broken. We teach you to bring the lemur back, take this off, and then go inside and clear the residence. Okay, excellent. So all of, these, all of these accessories are put on by simple thumb screws. And when you put the thumb screws on, they lock into place. Amazing. One other unique thing about the accessories is that uh, it really augments the actual drone itself. So now we can actually go in, find people with the IR. We also, and this is our payload area where we put those three screws in here mm -hmm. and where our power comes from, just in front of our speaker. When we put on those attachments here and it flies, doesn't add a lot of weight, we're still able to maneuver the aircraft through some pretty tight quarters. These standoffs here are very unique to this aircraft also. And the reason they're here is to assist when this thing flips over. Excellent. So if you're flying inside of an environment and this thing flips over, these standoffs give it enough area so it can create lift and it'll actually flip itself over so you can continue your mission. So let's say you're inside of a, a structure and you hit something and the actual aircraft ends up in this orientation. All you do is flip it into turtle mode. It can flip right to left or right side up. Super. So you can flip back over and then continue your mission as, as you need to. So that's, uh, that's really the unique capability of the, the turtle mode is to be able to know that if you hit something inside the environment and this thing right sides up, you can get it back right side up and continue your mission. Any questions on that? No, I mean that's that's just absolutely incredible, frankly, and it is it is a real little you know bespoke item which is which is so focused on the on the job at hand, which again is another advantage with having to take another enterprise drone and sort of shoehorn it into a particular situation. You know this this yeah. drone really does have that. Now that that case and the way that everything is set up there, um, that that looks like you're able to deploy the drone pretty quickly. So actually, that's a Great point. So we think that what we have here is the fastest out of the box into the air system. So for example, when when the case is opened and you take the battery and you just insert the battery into the back of the lemur, mm -hmm. it's turned on. It's automatically recording to the SD card, both voice and video. So there's no comment of this is being used in an operation. The officer could forget to turn it on to record that evidence. Excellent. We want to have this thing as transparent as possible and really innovate in, in the way that public safety operations are happening. So, Sean, we've been kind of talking a bunch here uh, while Kevin's just getting ready. Is there any questions or comments that I could target before we start our flight demo? Yeah, I, um, I, 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 I do have a question. 
if 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 I can ask, do. how 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 important is the is the spotter when it comes to this? Because obviously the drone pilot is is having FPV goggles. Do you is it how 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 important is the spotter for for so the pilot this itself? Is really, this is a great question, and so we have in R and D a. Uh, a controller with a screen that's built in so that you can fly at line of sight as well as FPV, <laughs> as well as <laughs> FPV from the goggles itself. And the reason for that is exactly this. Bigger agencies, like for example, Las Vegas or some of the other larger agencies that actually fly the system in the field, the guy will wear the FPV goggles and he'll have someone next to him making sure that him or her is okay right? And that they're safe and that they're flying and they're not disoriented when they do the kind of, you know, little Stevie Wonder look when they're yes. <laughs> really looking up into the air and they're flying the drone and they're really focused and tunnel visioned into their art. Now, because of that, we've created this new controller, which, you know, will come out soon in the future. You'll, you'll know about it. And it's a really beautiful piece of equipment that is an alternative to using the FPV goggles. But a lot of people realize that FPV is awesome. Now with this, so let me, let me, let me, let you want to, all right, we're gonna let we're gonna let Cap do it. So, like so I think I'm 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 not qualified, but I can talk about this for a <laughs> second because I'm new to this myself. And with the FPV goggles versus looking at the controller, I can tell you that everyone that comes in here is a controller with the screen pilot. They that, that's how they know it from their GPS uh, drums. When they come in here and they actually put these goggles on, this is a complete submersive environment. When you put the goggles on yourself and you lop these on your eyes, you are sitting in the front seat of the aircraft. You have no distractions around you. You can really feel like you're piloting the actual aircraft. And if you look here on the screen, this is exactly what you're looking at in the, in the goggles. Excellent. So if Nathan can come up here a little closer. So not only will you see, so let me just show you real quick what this means. So this tells you how much voltage left you have in your battery. So you don't gotta be looking anywhere else at all. Uh, and on God's plane with the, the camera. <laughs> this right here is your centering. This little crosshair lets you know exactly where the center of your aircraft is. This tells you how long you've had the battery in, and this tells you how long you've been actually flying. At the top, this gives you channel and signal strength. So as Nathan backs up a little bit, you'll notice when you're flying, and I'll just hold this real quick without the noise of the lamer. So when I'm actually flying, and uh, Angai, can you go inside the room there? Yeah. So if I'm actually piloting, this is exactly what the pilot is seeing. Versus looking around, I can actually fly in, and I can locate the suspect and hover and hold on them, or go out the window, or circle back around, and I can come right back out into the environment. What's really unique about these goggles here is that when you are looking at a controller, you have the distractions of people around you. As soon as you put these goggles on and you're in the subversive environment, you don't have any distraction of anyone around you. You can sit yourself or stand and you are completely sitting in the front seat of this drone, which allows you to get into some pretty tight spaces without having ambient light around you. These are, these are meant to seal your whole eyeballs and your forehead. So if you look on here at the goggles themselves, there's a leather strap that goes around the top that locks in all the outside light. So you're able to see, not only do you have a recording in the lemur, so as soon as you put your SD card in the lemur, it starts giving you video and audio. Above the left eye piece on these, you can also put an additional SD card and record what the goggles is seeing as a backup to that. So you can not only record audio and video from the lemur itself, but you'll only get video from the goggles. Right. Which you'll look exactly what's on that screen. So it's a backup to what you're doing. This also has a fan. So when you turn on the goggles themselves, we tell everyone to automatically activate the fan. This blows air right down on your forehead and your face to eliminate any of the um, fogging that can occur if you're in a cold awesome. environment or a, a really hot environment. You can record, start or stop the, the actual recording from your goggles only for the goggle recording. And then you can siphon through all the different channels. Let's say you get to an environment. One of the skills I teach the students is we may deploy in an, in an apartment complex where there's a thousand different frequencies going on. Absolutely. I can actually change the channels on that through the goggles, find the new channel and get a better signal to go fly. That's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, Ready I mean, that, for the that, uh, yes, please. That would be fantastic. We are, we are all yours. By the way, what's our time check? 
Uh, time check. We are currently um, with 35 minutes into the show. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll just do a few yeah, things. We'll do a so the first thing I do, Sean, is when they come in, this is important. I'll just go through a couple of the skills that we do. The first thing we do is because it is a manual drone, we will teach our students how to basically lift off. The arming system is very simple. And uh, just for the sake of the show, I'm not going to go through the whole transmitter. But what we'll do is we'll take them through an actual couple of times. What this does is in LIDAR mode, which is one of our which is one of our modes, it will actually light up in the air and our little um, computer or laser, which is called the LIDAR on the side here, will actually read the ground and lock it into space. And I'll show you how that yeah. works. So I want to comment on that really quick because a couple times Kevin has said, hey, it's a manual drone, right? It is a manual drone. Yes, if it's in a 100% manual mode and you're a really competent pilot, man, you're going to do amazing things with this piece awesome. of equipment. But as, as we've been learning, a lot of folks in this drone industry, they're not coming from the FPV world. They're coming from the DJI, the GPS world, where the drones are very, very simple to fly. Now, with obstacle sensors, it's not going to let you go through a tight space. That obstacle sensor is going to stop you. And so with our drone, we have a LiDAR sensor or a laser on the base that is the pilot assist. So you can fly it in completely manual or you can fly it in pilot assisted mode where you have the, the LiDAR basically keeping it at a, at a stable hover. And that's something that is one of our engineering priorities to make this thing easier and easier to fly as, as time goes on. And so in LiDAR mode in the hover, you'll see here, if I bring it up at 50% stick, it'll hold its hover. And so I'll bring it up at 50% stick. So you'll notice my sticks here. I'm not even touching the throttle at all. I'm just holding the bit of the wall just to keep it safe. But it will stay at that point in safety. If I want to, I can basically just drive around. I can yaw around and drive right to the environment and it will stay at that level. I'm not even touching. Now look, I'm not touching the ball at all. I'm just holding it from yawing and from rolling and hitting. That's all. So that allows the students to feel real comfortable with the level playing field. Absolutely. They can drive around like an RC car. So they don't have to mess with the throttle anymore. They can just simply pitch or roll as it's flowing through the environment. So you'll be able to lock it in at, say, five or six feet and start just driving through residence, like the wall, hallways, the bedrooms, just to get a, a so you're not constantly fighting. We find that the, the hardest part to fly any drone is that throttle control. Absolutely. You keep getting yes. that bounce. Yeah, And absolutely. what's really difficult, and this is, a, a, which is really nice about the goggles, when you're in that environment, the, the bouncing seems to slow down a little bit because you're in that, you're feeling the bounce. So that actually helps our pilots level it a little bit more to help them be able to see what they can see. So what I'm going to have you do now is I'm going to put some goggles on and I'm going to have Nathan actually have it on the screen and I'll show you just, I'll just do a quick little lap in the daytime to show you just kind of the capabilities and what this thing can actually go under. Awesome. That's fantastic. Thank you. Hey, Sean, I think that the viewers are going to like this. Because now we're getting real I'm, fun I'm stuff, looking right? forward to it this too. This is the product actually working. <laughs> Uh, just very quickly, thank you for everybody for joining us this evening. We've been popping in the break room the link in the chat. The so, are you guys ready? Are we ready? He's yep, armed, and Kevin's clear. Props clear. Props clear. Props clear. So this is an attic that we have for teaching folks how to fly, right? Okay. We, we, we've built what we call it. It's a confined space drone. It's designed to be tough, to bang around, to be easy to fly in, in tight environments. And just look at how he took that turn. I mean, for yeah. a system of this size, it's very stable. Is he going over or is he going under? <laughs> I got the he could go under, but he went over. 
And you know what's great about this? Kevin's only been flying drones for like three or four months. Kevin's Kevin, been flying for three to four months, right? Yeah. And I mean, he count. He, he Kevin was a had a a, a a long career as a SWAT operator. Absolutely. For a major metropolitan department, you can tell. You know, he's, he's a very he's a trained man. He, you know, he's an exceptional instructor. But this is to demonstrate that this system can be adopted by almost anybody with a little practice. You want to show the drone flying? <laughs> this gimbal can be fun to control. There she is. Very impressive. Really Absolutely impressive. Incredible, isn't it? So, okay. shut it up on me real quick. So, let's say, and I'll just show you just in daytime. Let's say you. Uh, you bang into something, I'm upstairs, and it flips over. So as soon as it flips over, I'm going to look on my screen and see that I'm inverted on the, on the actual link. And then so as soon as we get the camera straight in there, hold on a second. Yeah, this gimbal <laughs> is having fun right here. We yeah. apologize so let's about say, that. So that's what you're going to see. If I'm the pilot, I see that it's flipped upside down. Do you guys see that? Yep. What's nice is turn it back around. All I got to do on my, on my controller here is I flip to my turtle mode and arm it. And then I can basically look at the lemur here, and I can just flip it right back over. Awesome. That's very and cool. And I can disarm the turtle, lock it back in, and I'm back to where I need to go. So I want to show you one of the capabilities that we, we teach is uh, there's a door over here. Um, I'm going to show you what we can do with this. We actually can push doors open. This is an inward swinging door, so I don't, I'm not going to push it open, but I want to show you what it can basically take. Excellent. So we'll actually go up to the door. And we'll actually push into the door. We'll actually push into it and push it forward. I'll go up to it. That's great tactical awareness. Also, this thing can take a little bit of use. Uh, we talked to the point. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> imagine a hallway and the suspect is barricaded along the hallway and it's really hard to go through well what's yes. really nice about the prop guards is we can put the prop guards right up against the wall and use them as a guide and fly right down the, the wall and we teach that in our class so it looks something like this excellent I'll arm it, get it up cover, and we will lean it into it, we'll go into the wall. Going to where we need to go, that way we, we, we maximize the amount of space possible Absolutely. to get the lemur in some tight areas. Yeah. With no, with no collision avoidance, we can do that. I can go up and park right next to this thing, to the wall, and as you saw, we'll just push students right down the hall, have them turn around and come back. That way they know that they can rely upon those, those prop guards to be kind of that. Mm -hmm. Let them get through, which works really, really well when we're trying to get things going. Now, let me do that same flight, but I'm going to shut the lights off in complete pitch black. And, and uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the difference between the IR and not. Now, that obviously, cool. we're going to have a little bit of um, obviously we're going to have a little bit of light from the television set. Yes, but of course. Again, yes. when I get upstairs, just just how just how nice it is. I'll, I'll find the suspect up there and I'll show you. Nice. Uh, Sean, did you it. say something? Uh, yeah, I was just uh, asking. We've had a few questions. If if we could cover at some point the the type of transmission that you're using from the point of view of control let's as a drone and, let's, and for the let's, video. Let's do the nighttime flight thing really quick. Perfect. And then let's go through all Q&A. So Wonderful. now you can tell you switched the lights off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So now we're completely pitch black. I actually, yeah. Yeah, there's Kevin over there. I can kind of see him because he has lights on his goggles. You can kind of see him under the emergency light. Yep. And then here, now we're going to go to the TV. So now the IR is on. Okay. Hey, hey have a point to the uh, drones. They came in. So point it to the floor where you can't see the drone at all. I already got the shot. Kevin. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, we can't see you at all, Kevin. We already right. got it. Now we're on. Maybe turn IR on and off for him. So there's yeah. IR off. 
now infrared's going to be turned back on. Nice. And now you can see the infrared diodes. Yeah. I mean, for me, this is amazing. I, I just, I think that it has so much capability. And so, for example, when we show the IR capability, folks will say, hey, Oh, there's the oh, suspect. Tracked. Right there. yeah. <laughs> but a, a lot of times folks will ask us why we aren't using thermal. And so actually our VP sales, Brett Kanda, he came from FLIR. I came from Pix4D. So we've been in the drone industry for a while. And oh, Brett. Well, we yeah, I, 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 I know Brett. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah. I've, yeah, I know Brett. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so thermal is really powerful, but. When you want to see very, very clearly in pitch black environments, pure infrared like we have here is going to provide a significant advantage. And so that's why we use pure infrared, like, like night vision goggles, mm -hmm. instead of the thermal. Although we do have systems with thermal that we can, we can sell, but it's not as uh, – it's, it's for a different use case. Yes. Mm. Superb. Awesome. Here, let's all turn the lights on, Kevin. Okay. And that's the lemur. Absolutely. So, uh, I'm just going to show you the accessories just for the sake of time. I'll show you how they're attached. Um, maybe a future broadcast, we can do an accessory uh, uh, demonstration. Yeah, but basically, good. all they do is. On the bottom side, I'll just put on this um, uh, this this floodlight. They basically plug on, plug in in the back for your power, and then you just put them on with three screws. I'll show you. He'll show you in a second. Sean, so I'll ask these questions first, and I'll, I'll yeah. On. While Kevin's doing that, Sean. You want to ask, start asking questions and I can answer? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, some of the questions which have come up a few times in the chat is 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 this the type of transmission that you're using in terms of uh, both the the controller um, uh, capabilities and the video transmission? Is it, are, are they bespoke or, or or are these off the shelf types of uh, um, uh, software? So everything for the purposes of this are bespoke. Okay. okay. So basically, oh, can you see me clearly? Uh, yes, yeah. we're still figuring out how to do yeah, gimbals absolutely. well. I'm sorry. You, you, so, it, it, it has been superb. Don't worry. It is. It is. It is it okay, is I, I appreciate yeah. it, Sean. Thank you. <laughs> There's three radios in the drone. There is the the radio for command and control, which is 915 megahertz. Then there's the second radio, which is the the the, the video receiver, right? The v VTX that is going to be using an analog encrypted video signal, and then the third thing is going to be the cellular chip, which we put a SIM card in it and you just call it like a cell phone. And that's how you're able to go ahead and actually communicate directly with someone with that two-way audio. And so there's three different radios built in. And I think the command and control radio is what this question is initially asking. Yes. And that's 915 megahertz. And something that we do because of the end clientele that we've initially created this drone for is everything is one-to-one -one encrypted so it's a one-to-one -one connection Excellent. so that someone can't come in and view the video signal if it's not through our box uh same thing goes with the command and control okay with the accessories i'll just demonstrate the one for today this one happens to be the light it attaches with the power on the back you control it from the inside of the uh the control from the transmitter once it's on this is the capability of the white light so i'll just uh kill the power real quick i'll fly it around real quick show you the difference of what it looks like with the white light on you can see it turns right on. You see how nice the drive is. Yeah, hits. that's awesome. Wow. And I'll just come and at you and you'll see how it works. Oh, <laughs> 
it's intimidating, isn't it? Which obviously is, you know, part of the advantage. And part of the advantage yeah, of it, yeah, yeah. True, true. John, exactly what you just said there. That's one thing that we try as much with education and with doing events like this to go away from. We know that what we have, right, this idea that, hey, it's a little Im intimidating, right? This is a, a tool that's designed for the police, right, to execute their missions with, with greater efficiency. So knowing that, we as a company have tenants in an ethics page where we will never weaponize any system. Everything we do is to create a less lethal, a more efficient and a more modern method of an existing technique that already exists. And that's our promise as a company. And that's what we've promised pretty much the world that we want to make sure that everything we're doing, we're constantly checking in from an ethical perspective. We're going into communities and we're explaining the technology and why this technology is being utilized because we understand that we have great power with creating this type of technology. And we need to make sure that we are taking the input from communities and from local governments and from folks that, you know, have questions to make sure that we're doing the right thing and that we never produce a system that in the long run will, will have more harm than good. Excellent. So that's just you know very important to us, Sean. Yeah, which, which is excellent, which, which again, of course, does um, very much tally with with a lot of your customers, with, with your customer base and, 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 and their own missions to, 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 to look to have as positive and, and safe outcome of, 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 of any kind of tactical situation, frankly. So uh, that, 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 is, that is really good to hear. That, that, that is absolutely superb. Um, so at, at, at the moment, it's, it's operational in the United States. Um, and do you, yeah. have, do you have plans to sell the product to um, uh, um, law enforcement in, in Europe Absolutely. and in other areas? Absolutely. We want to have this thing sold pretty much all over the world Excellent. to all friendly nations. Um, Laurent at brinkdrones.com is the email for our director of EMEA sales. So Laurent Rouchon, um, uh, you know, Laurent, I'm sure you can, you can spell it French name, spelled like normal. <laughs> um, uh, at brinkdrones.com is the email address for our director of EMEA sales. Um, actually, Laurent used to be an executive at Parrot, as well as prior to that, an executive at Sky Hero, who produces the Loki. Um, and he's come over and joined our team to lead our European operations in the sales capacity because he believes very much in the technology that we have. We believe what we have is exceptional, well-made, domestically manufactured in the U.S., and we just want to have the best customer support and provide something that people see as a tangible good that's causing real, real, you know, safety increases in the public safety world. Sean, one more quick thing to show you is our payload dropper, which is really important uh, to actually drop things off to people. You come over here, I already installed it. On the transmitter, I can actually control how the actual dropper works. I'll just put my pair of keys in, uh, just so we don't have to, um, yeah. <laughs> can you hold these up here? So let's say we, we can hook anything with the zip tie uh, water bottles, so as it's flying, I can bring it over and all you do is activate the transmitter back up just a little bit, Nathan, so they can see it. So say it's flying, you just activate the transmitter and as soon as it opens, the keys fall right out to whatever you're at and you can fly away. Excellent. So we can drop, uh, this will also work with our robot mount. So this would, as this goes on, this fits inside of our battery inside the tray. We've hence made another upgrade where there's a little cylinder here that fits in between here so it doesn't bounce around, but it just locks in here locks in and this can ride piggyback on anything open up and fly away super the last thing is, is our glass breaker we'll do this in another demonstration when we have some time to do some glass yes this actually hooks up in here we can activate it spin it we'll we'll have another broadcast where we can actually go out and we'll break some glass for you show how that works that's cool that's very so cool the, the glass breaker is something that a lot of folks look at and they say oh that's you know that's that's a little scary to be very honest well we would like people to know that using a glass breaker like this that just shatters glass and it, right down is significantly safer than explosively breaching a window mm -hmm. or throwing something through a window where you don't know who's lying down on the couch. Exactly. And exactly. so that's why yeah. we are very like in that line of thinking that everything we do is that less lethal yeah that's safer and, 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 that and, and modern when when i when i saw that as well i thought to myself of you know you you need to get eyes and ears inside that property 
And, you know, this is a much safer way of doing it than many of the alternatives for everybody involved. Because, again, if, if you hear a window break and you see this little drone flying through, it isn't you know, it, it isn't armed people coming through. So that, that suspect's not going to necessarily make, you know, bad decisions, etc., just just upon seeing a drone flying in the sky. So um, I, I think it, it, it is a fantastic product. Um, and um, that, that, was an, that was an amazing uh, demonstration. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, for showing it to us. It's absolutely superb. Um, in 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 terms of um uh, cost wise i mean it, w w what is the ballpark figure i know obviously these things are um uh, uh bespoke to customer and numbers of units and that type of thing so but it's not so expensive don't okay. worry Sean. it's not a thousand dollars for a kit okay so we've priced it because we believe in the power of this tech we want all the agencies to have it we want communities to have this tool because it will make communities safer so there's no point in making it you know incredibly expensive when then it doesn't do what it's meant to do, which is be used by communities. So it's nine thousand U.S. dollars, and yes, there's European pricing. Laurent can inform. It's a this. It's very similar. Nine thousand oh, dollars U.S. for a oh, kit. Gosh. Training is required at twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, the accessories kits about two thousand U.S. and the video receiver box that increases the signal as well as allows you to live stream that encrypted video onto a TV is about three thousand dollars U.S. This is all significantly less expensive than the current alternatives like terrestrial robots and whatnot. And so we believe that it should be innovative, it should be safer, and it should be accessible. There's no point charging tons of money. So we don't actually make so much money on the drones. We just feel good when communities use them. And Excellent. I think that anything, do you have any other questions, Sean? Uh, no, I mean, that, 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 that's basically everything from, from my side of things. Thank you again. Thank you so much for taking the time to do such a, an active demonstration. There is, um, I've been, I've been putting the Brink Drones link in the chat um, all, all evening and there's, there's a link to Brink Drones in the um, description below as well. Um, and, you know, go, go along, have, have a little explore, even if you're just a hobbyist out there, frankly, it's just fascinating to see what some of these, um, um, uh, 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 bright, frankly, and 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 innovative um, commercial companies are doing with with our with our beloved quads, and I I think this is this is one of the most positive um, um, uh, uses I've seen for for a long time. Where it's it's answering because again, f my frustration is twofold with with these types of drones. They they're always innovative, but firstly, we never get to see them. We see these CG things, and we get to see you know these great ideas of what this drone will do one day. And you know you, you you've you've already smashed that by actually flying the thing tonight and showing it to us, which is which is absolutely superb. But but also it's it, it's the the focus of use really impresses me as well. And and I I think there's there's a future there for drones from the point of view of not having to have a drone that does fifty different jobs, but actually having a specific drone that mm -hmm. does exactly what you need it to do. And in in this type of situation, especially because it is so bespoke, it it, it does deliver exactly what it's what it says on the tin, uh, which is which is another old out outdated. <laughs> Uh, saying but there we go um so yeah no as, as i say thank thank you very much I, I, I really appreciate you coming on this evening you're welcome thank you yeah thank you and in regards to brett as well you know because it's good to know that he's there because uh, i know where <laughs> he's come from and uh and it looks like he's in a good team there so please send send my regards as well yeah absolutely will do i mean it's you know blake is our ceo he's very innovative he's been in great companies Brett came from FLIR. I came from Fix4D. Kevin had a 30-year career with one of the best SWAT teams in the whole world. Um, and, and everybody else on our team, we really have a lot of passion, and it's incredible. And, and one thing I'll just add before we close real quick is that this, this aircraft allows us to locate, isolate, and then communicate. For SWAT teams and tactical teams, this will alleviate having to put my people in situations where there could be a problem. So this is a exactly. very de-escalating type tool. If I can locate, like I, I put the dummy up there, you guys saw me find him. I don't got to put an actual guy in there to cause a confrontation. We can communicate through him. We can isolate. Now we can go to different options to have a successful resolution. Absolutely, which is which is just absolutely fantastic, frankly. Uh, but so yeah, as, as I say, guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. We will keep in touch um, and um, see see where see where Brink Drones goes next, especially with this particular product. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll speak to you again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night. Cheers. Thanks. Okay, that was excellent, wasn't it? That was um, really, really fantastic stuff. And uh, as I say, th thank you guys very much for coming on and seeing us. I'm actually now just going to fix your window. Look, I've, I've made you all forehead. Are you, are, you, are you happy about that? Is this, is this how you want to be presented to the world? 
That's, well, okay, that, that's made a statement. bit shiny. It's so hot and sweaty here that my forehead's probably very shiny. So. Uh, well, it, yeah, I wasn't going to say anything, but yes. Uh, but no, that, that, that was absolutely fantastic. And, and it's great to see such innovation happening in, in the drone world and, and in, in the drone sphere, frankly. I think it's, um, it's, it's, it's something which is just, you know, really, really cool, frankly. You know, well, I think... sometimes you see something, you think that, that's just cool. Well, well, the well, just like I was saying there, you know, I, you know, I know one of the guys there, and 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 he left Fleer, and he's actually from Las Vegas, actually. So it's kind of, you know, obviously they, you know, you know, they're based in Las Vegas, but he left Fleer to go to Brink, which I think says a lot, really. You know, yeah, it really absolutely. says a hell of I mean, a lot. You, that when if, you, if, if you pick past the, the the front sort of facade of this, there's some really talented people in that in, in that company. Absolutely, and it's, Ab- and, and it's exciting absolutely. Cause, because because we we both speak to a lot of companies like that at the moment in the in the mm. in the wider drone world all over the world. Um, yeah. That it's just very exciting, and the, and the, the the amount of products and the amount of reusable products like like this Lima drone uh, that are coming yeah. out now is 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 fascinating, frankly. But yeah, um, we we will we I, I promise we will be back for a live demonstration. Of, of the smashing window um, um, at, at some point in the future. I know that that's one that I'm looking forward to seeing as well. But um, but the amount I think everyone wanted get, that the amount with yeah, the amount we managed to get demonstrated today was was pretty cool, frankly. So um, but it was yes, impressive. It was absolutely. And um, I have been dropping a, a link in the chat um, for Stephen's channel. Uh, if anybody hasn't picked him up yet, please do go across and subscribe. I understand you have now actually hit the thousand subscribe mark. I hit the 1,000 subscribe mark. Thank you to everyone. Really much appreciated. Thank you, Sean, for giving me a plug as well. 1,004 subscribers. 1,004 subscribers. See, that's so cool. The only, the only way is up. Yeah, exactly. That's so cool. Well, thank you, everybody, for 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 helping us achieve that this evening as well. I really do appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, it, it really just, you know... I, I, as, as, as I was saying, I, I, I really appreciate the guys from Brink Drones coming on to see us this evening. Um, it's been an fa- absolutely fa- fascinating show. Thank you, our audience, for coming on and seeing us as well. Um, and, of course, we will see you next Thursday on Geeks Fun Alive again. Um, and um, also, there's some great videos coming out, especially the UK Drone Rules videos coming out during this week. Um, I've got a video coming out which is, might be a little bit controversial about the, the new trust scheme in, 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 in the United States. Uh, so keep an eye out for that one as well. But I will see you all again soon. Thank you very much for coming and i really appreciate it see you next time on geeks vinyl live